Hey, I'm Logan. I'm the video producer here at Eichelite. And back in December, I went up to Northern Norway for an expedition to free dive with orcas, led by our ambassador, Jacques Dubos. While I was there, I filmed an episode of our Stories from the Field series, telling Jacques' story as a photographer. And you can check out the full video linked here on screen. Today, I'm just gonna run through my underwater and topside gear that I brought with me to give a little bit of an insight into what worked and what didn't work for me for this type of shooting. I shot video, photos, time lapses, interviews, so this should cover a variety of gear from anything from my underwater housing to audio for running gun shooting. All right, so I'll start with the case. This is a Nanook 955, which was great and held everything really well. Open it up, you can see it has got dividers in the bottom as well as pockets up here in the top, which really helped create just kind of a home base for all of my gear. I'll start off with my underwater camera rig. So for this shoot, I was shooting on the Sony a7S III, which is my main camera for really everything that I do. Um, but specifically for this shoot, it really helped because it's great in low light. So I was able to bump it up to ISO 16,000 and still get a really great image. I then paired that with the Sony 16-35 f2.8, which is just a really great lens for underwater, and I had it open all the way up at 2.8 most of the time, just because it was so dark. And all of that lived inside of the Eichelite underwater housing for the a7S III. Nothing too special here, I've just got trigger extensions, and the USB-C bulkhead, which was really nice for offloading footage and charging my camera throughout the day. With the housing, I also had the full-size 8-inch dome, which is kind of my go-to um, for free diving. I wouldn't say that it's the best. I think maybe the compact 8-inch dome would have been better, but um, it worked really well. and then just the uh, respective port extensions for the Sony 16-35. And then on top of the housing, I had a GoPro Hero 11. Now, I didn't really use this for the video or photos from the GoPro. I really just wanted the audio from it so I could sync it to the camera while it was inside the housing. So I could get clean uh, video with clean audio. It's a little tedious, but it ended up working out pretty well, so I'm happy with that. And I attached that to the housing with just a simple um, just a simple little arm so it sat up there really nicely and then of course I had the uh, dual tray handle so this is what the system looks like all together I'd say this is a great system for scuba diving free diving it was a little bit heavy in hindsight I would have picked a smaller prime lens so I didn't have to have a port extension on it and you can check out Jacques' setup, which is a little bit better for this kind of shooting. And I also had the um, vacuum pump just to put a vacuum on my system before I went diving. All right, moving on to topside gear. I found myself shooting a lot of topside throughout the trip. So this is where a lot of my gear was used and started off. I shot most of the video and stills with the Sony A1. I really only chose this camera for one reason, and that's because it is compatible with the Eichelite underwater housing for the a7S III. So if something were to go wrong with the a7S III, I would have a backup. Other than that, it's a great photo camera and really capable video camera. The ISO only went up to, I think it was 20,000. So uh, I was really pushing it for a lot of those nighttime shots, which it was night for most of the trip. And then most of the time I was shooting that with the Sony 24 to 105 f4 lens, which is just a really great focal range. I knew that I could uh, get what I needed at any time, so that was really great. All right, for audio, I was using this Sony XLR top handle with the Rode NTG5, and this was just a great setup. It blocked out all the wind, isolated voices really well, and uh, I really couldn't have asked for a better mic setup. However, this is not the same top handle that I had on my trip because about two days into the trip, mine snapped in half. So I hit a big wave, fell forward, and it completely snapped, which was not ideal. 
so plan B was the Ceramonic uh, wireless lobs and they worked fun and next I have my tripods this is the peak design travel tripod which I've used for a few years now specifically for some of the nighttime shots of the northern lights and stuff like that this thing held really really strong it's really light it packs down well and uh, can't say enough good things about it all right other than that uh, I've just got a few extras that I brought here um, the Novus polishing for the dome just in case I get a scratch um, I've got a blower for the sensor foreign plug converter definitely necessary and the only thing that didn't fit in this case to make it under 50 pounds was just this extras bag that I have um, this just has tools like extra o-rings screwdrivers um, and really anything that I would need extra or anybody else on the boat and then up here just some more stuff I uh, used a Samsung T9 hard drive and as well as a Lacey hard drive that I don't have on me right now to back up everything. All right, so this is just a quick rundown of the gear that I used. Be sure to check out the full video linked in the description and on the screen here. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments down below.